Hi, I'm Dr. Chet Rehal, Chair of the Division of Cardiovascular Diseases at Mayo Clinic. Today, I have a very special guest with me, good friend and colleague, Dr. Thomas Allison, who is a PhD exercise physiologist in our Division of Cardiology and Director of our Integrated Stress Center. Tom, welcome. Thank you, Chet. Tom, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, about your background, your interests, and when you came to Mayo? Okay, Chet. Well, I, I came to Mayo uh, 24 years ago after 10 years at, at another institution. My background is a PhD in exercise physiology and a Master of Public Health in Cardiovascular Epidemiology. My, my role here now, as you mentioned, is uh, Director of the Integrated Stress Testing Center and the Cardiopulmonary Stress Testing Lab, and I also work in the Preventive Cardiology section. Tom, can you tell us about uh, O2 treadmill uh, exercise testing? You've made many contributions here at Mayo, but one of the important ones has been the implementation and expansion of O2 treadmill testing in our practice. Yeah. What's it used for? Oh, well, somebody asked me the other day if I invented it, of course, which I <laughs> didn't, but, but I, I have sort of popularized it here. And um, in the evaluation of patients with complex cardiovascular disease, for whom surgical interventions may be very important, but surgical interventions also convey a certain risk and expense. So correct selection of patients is very important. And our group here has found that uh, the cardiopulmonary test is really invaluable in determining how limited the patient is and, and whether that limitation is primary cardiovascular and thus could be fixed with an intervention. So O2 treadmill testing can help differentiate cardiac from pulmonary from deconditioning causes of dyspnea, is that correct? That's correct. You know, the standard treadmill testing with the Bruce protocol is, is basically for the diagnosis of coronary disease and establishment of prognosis in coronary disease. But when you have heart failure, valvular heart disease, other forms of structural heart disease, the, the test um, falls a little bit short in that patient group. Tom, you've been an advocate and proponent of exercise for all. Can you tell us what the role of exercise in health should be? Should we all be exercising? And if so, what types of exercise ought we be doing? Well, we, we should all be physically active, okay? And, and so if, if we're gonna talk about you know, exercise, uh, meaning at the gym or in, in some competitive fashion, we don't all need to do that. But we all need to do to be physically active to maintain our weight, help maintain our blood pressure, our glucose levels, maintain our joint and muscle function. Are there specific types of exercise that are better than others? I'm thinking uh, aerobic versus resistance versus other things, combination exercises. Yeah. Well, from from a standpoint of cardiovascular health, which which of course is our primary focus. Uh, there's a little bit of data to suggest that resist resistance exercise might play a role, but the overwhelming amount of evidence, the weight of evidence is on uh, aerobic type of exercise, brisk walking, cycling, yeah. climbing hills, hiking, swimming, things like that. And what about the role of exercise in disease? What, what do you advise our patients with coronary disease, heart failure, and other problems? Yeah, well, well, we find that we, we encourage them all to exercise. There are basically very few patients, uh, a handful, that shouldn't be exercising, maybe at least until they have their surgery or something. But almost everybody is exercising to improve their functional status, their ability to kind of get around and do their daily activities and be productive, happy citizens despite their disease. Now, there's also some evidence that the exercise may reduce their chance of having recurrent attacks of their disease mm -hmm. or might even in certain cases reduce the progression of their disease. If the exercise, for example, if the patient's a borderline diabetic and the exercise controls their blood sugar and their blood pressure, that may have an impact on the progression of their disease. I think it, I, I don't think we can prevent 100% these recurrent events by any technique, including exercise, but we can certainly improve the patient's functionality and 
very possibly improve their downstream uh, course yeah. of their disease. Tom, should patients or anyone have a stress test before embarking upon an exercise program? Yeah. Well, I, I think a patient with cardiovascular disease needs an evaluation of a stress test uh, before they start exercising. Uh, in terms what about of, an average middle-aged physician? What about them? Uh, well, anybody who's having exertional symptoms. So if, if the guy says, gee, I, I tried to start exercise, but I got really short of breath, or I got some, I was tired for three hours afterward, someone like that should get a stress test. Now, there's controversy as to whether an asymptomatic person should get a stress test, even with a lot of risk factors. A stress test is safe. It's not high on the list of cost, costly procedures, so when in doubt, why not do it? But, but asymptomatic, healthy people probably don't need one. Our guest today has been Dr. Tom Allison, director of the Integrated Stress Center at Mayo Clinic. Dr. Allison today has emphasized the role of exercise in health and disease and talked about the role of cardiopulmonary stress testing in differentiating causes of dyspnea in our practice. It's been a very useful adjunct to our practice, and we look forward to having Dr. Allison back in future segments to tell us about this technique in more detail. Tom, thank you very much okay, for joining thanks, us. Chad.